Hey, what's up? Chin here from Code and Code Tips. Today with a new video on how to do a simple animation in Slick 2D. Um, to start off, you will need some sort of images for your animation, and usually an animation consists out of uh, multiple image files or multiple images, and each image represents one frame. Um, to make this a bit easier and a bit faster to load into the into the actual game later on, you will normally use something called a sprite sheet. And here you can see a simple sp a sprite sheet I got for an animation of a running character. And the sprite sheet simply contains out of all the frames your animation will later on have. So in that case um, it's a running animation. So here we have a bunch of frames and each of those persons here represents one individual frame. And to create a fluid animation we will just play back all those frames after each other. But um, if you now ask why I don't do single files for every frame, that's because it's simply way slower to load and way more work to load in the long term. So if you create a sprite sheet um, for your animation, you should um, consider two things. Um, every frame has to be the same size, so that's one frame, and that has to be the same size as the next frame here. And the second thing you need to know about your sprite sheet is how big is one frame and how many frames are there per row, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 in my case, and how many rows are there, so 1, 2, 3, 4 in my case, and how many frames in total, so yeah, you can count those. And if you got that, you take your sprite sheet and you will save it into one of your projects. I already set up a basic project for that um, purpose of the tutorial, so here you can see we have our empty game class as usual and I have created a folder called res in my project on the left here and I have put down the animation file I've just shown you that file and I called it animation.png um, To start off we will first need to obviously load the animation file and then we can work with that file to actually display the animation on the screen So to start off we simply load the image by saying uh, image i equals new image. So we simply load the file here, nothing special. Um, then we include image, here we go. If you wonder how I do say auto include, you hit um, string, shift and O to auto include and it will show you up um, what you need to include. So. Now we have our simple image here, and if we would render it, it would just be sad. But we want to have the single frames rendered after each other to have a fluid animation. To do that, Slick provides a handy class called Animation. So if we just go and create an animation variable to hold our animation, we need to type um, private animation, and I will call it A. So. I will do the old school way here and um, yeah, include that. So now we have our animation variable. Um, the next step is to actually fill up that animation with frames, so with frames to display. To do that we will first have to create the animation in the init method as we did with our image. Um, so that's quite usual, you just do set and you get an empty animation. Um, what we now need to do is we need to render the animation and we need to update the animation. To do that we say a dot draw and we can give it some position so yeah. That's the same as if you would draw an image, it's basically exactly the same. You just um, call the method on the animation object. For the update method you have to call animation.update and give it the delta time. This method will actually um, cycle through the images so it will go from one image to another when a certain time is over and through that it can achieve the animation. If you forgot set, if you forget set lane, set line, um, it will actually not move so the, um, the animation will not animate. It will be stuck at the first frame. But you can also do that on purpose if you for example want to pause your game you can just not call the update method and the animation will only draw. So that's quite handy. Um, if we now start, um, you will actually see an error. 
Okay. Uh, here we go. Yeah, we have no images in our animation. How shall we draw anything? Um, yeah, that's true. So, set animation has actually a quite handy um, method that's called add frame. Here we can add a new frame to the animation. So it takes an image and set duration in milliseconds how long set um, frame will stay until the next frame will come up. Um, if I just put in the image we loaded up right now, or the image we loaded up, and start it, you will see it will just run as a whole image. But that's not what you want, you want one after another. And therefore we will have to add one frame after another to the animation. To do that we will need to split up our image into multiple small images. Um, so, because you will often have to create an animation, I thought, why not just create a method that will create our anima animation. So here we go, we create a new method to load an animation and I call it public anim animation. It will return an animation object, get animation. So, what do we need to split up our image properly? Um, that's quite simple, we will need the image itself that we want to split up and fill in our animation. So, uh, image i. We will need the amount of sprites that are in one row, so the amount of sprites on the x-axis. I will just call that int sprite x. And we will also need the amount of sprites in the y-axis, so the amount of rows of sprites, so in sprites y um, and we will need how big one of those sprites sprite frames is so we will need the size of one frame um, in my particular case the size of one uh, yeah I will tell you tell you this later but we will need that so we will need in sprite worth and we will need in sprite hey so here we go we will need that to split up the image and the last thing we will need is actually the amount of frames in total. And what we need set for is, you see here is one missing frame. And we need set um, a number of sprites in total to actually stop adding um, sprites. Uh, otherwise we would add that empty thing. And we would get like a flickering effect in our main animation. So if you have a flickering effect in your animation, it's most likely that you have added some empty image to it that will make this flickering. So to go on we will yeah, need the total number of sprites in int also. Oh, frames. Here we go. Now we have everything to load up on our animation. To start off we will just create a new animation as we did down here, just in our class. So here we go, we created a new animation called A and now we need to fill it up with um, actually, yeah, we, we need to fill it up with frames. And at the end we will return our finished animation. So, to do that we will actually um, create two loops now. Two loops through the rows and to actually pick every image. So, go here and create two for loops. Ah, sorry for that type errors. It's not that common for me to have my keyboard laying there because I need to move it because of the microphone. Here we go. Um, set the first loop. Set will go through our rows and now we need to go through our actually images in each row. So we'll just change that quickly. Here we go. So now we loop um, basically we loop set way, so set image, set image, set image, set image, and we go set way. So now we actually need to pick that image. To do that, um, we say a dot add frame, and we want to add a new frame. So what's our frame? We need a sub image of our actually image that we started off. So we call i dot um, sub get sub image. Here we go. Uh, set will take the starting x and the starting y, so the top left corner of the sub-image we want, and we will take how big the sub-image is. So in our case it will be x multiplied with the width of one single sprite, and it will be y multiplied with the 
height of one single sprite. And that will quite obviously be just those two. And the duration, we can set that on any random value right now. Or we can actually, yeah, let's add a parameter here in duration. And let's add that in here. So you can actually say how fast it is. So what the add frame method does basically is it will add a new um, frame to the animation and sets the duration of that particular frame. And the sub image method takes um, the image at set position. So if I can get in here, it will start at 0, 0 with the top left corner and will take the first image and we will just loop through the whole image and take every single sub image and yep, then we will add one image after another to the animation and therefore we have a finished animation. At least I hope so. If we now call our method and say a equals get animation and now we need to fill in the parameters um, for our image, so our base image the sprites on the x-axis are in my case 7. I got 4 rows per um, each row 7 sprites. One sprite has a width of 130 I believe and the height of 150. Um, that will change for every animation so depending on your sprite sheet but if you create some animations it shouldn't be a problem for you to know those values. And the last thing will be the total amount of frames which we haven't used yet I will show you that later because you will see a nice negative example for what not to do. Um, in my case that would be 27. And the duration per frame, let's say 100 milliseconds per frame. If we now start our project, you will see we got an animation. It's a quite fluid animation, but it flickers at the end. And that's because we have one empty frame. To prevent that, we will need our um, maximum frames amount here. And we will just go and count and say, in count or in C equals zero. So sets our counter how many frames we've added. And after we added a frame, we just say increments C by one. So we know how many frames we have actually added yet. And then we just say if C is smaller than frames. So if we actually have not added, um, so it won't add more frames than we want because C counts how many frames we have. And if we have more frames, then we want to add, we will just skip that frame and therefore not add it. If we now start it, you will see that we hopefully have no flickering. Yeah, we have no flickering and it works perfectly. So what you need to do for an animation to wrap it up again, you need to have a sprite sheet with all the images. You need to split up the sprite sheet in, the, um, in every frame. So you need to split up the sheet in all the single frames for your animation. And at the end you can't just place animation because you have an animation with all the frames. A few things to say to the animation. If we change the speed so we say we make it really fast, let's say one millisecond per frame, then it will go crazy fast. And you can also go the other way around. Um, one last thing to note, um, the animation class has some more methods you can yeah, you can have a look at. For example, the setter methods are you can set if it will um, loop, so if it will place the animation once and then stop, or if it will go on and go on, as I did here. Um, you can set in ping pong mode, that's the last thing. And ping pong mode is basically, um, let me show you set on the sprite frame. It will go that way, render set, render set, go set, go that way, go that way, go that way. And if it comes to the last frame, it will actually go backwards and render the animation backwards. So it goes place the animation forward and place it back and forward and place it back and on and on. So it does that all the time. Um, can be handy sometimes, I've not used it so often. And that's basically everything you need to know about basic animations. And before anyone comes in the comments and says, hey, is that splitting method, it's so, yeah, it's so much work, I don't want to do it, I would just do every frame as one single image. Um, don't do that um, as set will coast a lot of performance and you might say yeah I, I don't care about performance it runs fine on my PC but as soon as you have like 100 different animation animations in your game it will be a pain to load all those with the individual images and over said if you have once created a method like that and um, for your specific game it's like 
one line of code or two to load a new animation, so just don't do it that you load one image per sprite uh, per animation frame because that's not a good yes yeah, that's not good just don't do it with that said i really hope you enjoyed and if you enjoyed please give me a thumbs up and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel that helps me a lot if you have any questions or you want to discuss anything please leave me a comment down below and yeah i hope you enjoyed and i will see you next time